So Lisa and I kept joking about the sort of nested dolls of this of this presentation. So um, we're going to do this big section right here where we walk through all of Harris's marks and talk about the sort of teaching moments and talk about the practices that fall um, for for each of these things. So so we're going to backtrack for just a moment and um, and uh, talk about what happened in um, a couple of interesting um, moments of, of proclamation. So this is a picture actually from, uh, from the church that I work at, which is uh, St. Paul's K Street in Washington. Uh, I tell people that I work in a medieval Catholic church, and that is, uh, that is not far uh, from the truth. Um, but uh, as we'll see in the story, that, that creates a really cool opportunity for a proclamation about what a week and a half or so ago on, on Ash Wednesday. And so uh, we, when this was a big step for us as a um, very traditional church, participated in the Ashes to Go um, movement. And <clears throat> our community is very blessed in that we, the church is right on the outskirts of the George Washington University campus. And the local metro stop is right in front of the GW Hospital. So that metro stop is like, I mean, it, it, at times it sort of felt like Times Square. There's a lot of traffic um, in, that, in that little area, just a couple blocks. I mean, we are, I think, well, one of the closest churches to that little corner. And we decided that we were going to participate in this Ashes to Go movement as a, uh, as a part of our parish's uh, proclamation. And I just want to hold up a couple of interesting things about that experience. One, um, it was a way for, for our church to sort of get out into the neighborhood um, in a way that it, that, it usually, um, that it usually doesn't. We do a lot of service in our neighborhood, which is, you know, which is Foggy Bob in Washington. We do a great control ministry where every Saturday and Sunday morning we drive different routes and, uh, and hand out breakfasts to homeless people sleeping on the, uh, on the grates in Washington, like five days a week, college students come and work. It's a, it's a powerful ministry, um, but it's it's uh, it's, it's diaconia, right? And so this was a cool chance for St. Paul's to get out and do some charisma, to do uh, you know some proclamation of the Ash Wednesday message of our finiteness and our mortality and um, both the sin in our lives and our experience of God's love and uh, forgiveness. So that was a, a really cool thing. Another thing that was interesting about this proclamation was uh, I was struck by how many people came by and said to us, thank you so much for being here. Um, this bit of proclamation was something that, that the people in this neighborhood really wanted. I don't think we put ashes on too many folks who then use that as an excuse not to go to church. I think we put ashes on a lot of folks who hadn't been to church in a long time or realistically weren't going to make it today. And our being there didn't change that, but what it did was it gave them an opportunity to stop, to remember that it was Ash Wednesday, or to learn that it was Ash Wednesday in, uh, in some cases, and to have that moment of encounter with God in a way that, that was so appreciated. <coughs> Thank you was the thing that we heard over and over again that day. It was, uh, it was really powerful. Um, there's an interesting gender moment going on in this uh, in this photo. Um, in the back, in the mitre, is uh, is Bishop Marianne Buddy, who is the uh, is the Bishop of Washington, and uh, she's standing next to the priest in charge of our parish, uh, Nathan Humphrey. And um, St. Paul's is a place that has, has struggled um, with the uh, with the ordination of women. Um, that's there are parishes that uh, that are still um, you know divided about that. Um, and uh, that's a strange experience to be someone uh, working there, I can tell you. But this was, so this was a beautiful... With a wife in seminary. Yeah, with a wife in seminary. <laughs> um, and this was a beautiful um, moment of, of, of in, a way that, in a way that people there could, could understand and get behind and be excited about, of, of our bishop uh, being with us and um, serving with us. And if you, if you happen to see some of the video of, of Bishop Marianne, out um, imposing ashes. It was so powerful. She is such a gifted pastor, and um, the, the, this picture captures it pretty well, but just the way that she just gets in close and has this holy moment, it was, it was so powerful. And um, so that was something that was challenging for our parish, as was this very um, act 
and yet, um, you know, uh, on the whole, people embraced it. And it was this empowering thing of getting out and saying, hey, we matter. Um, our very old-fashioned parish actually is mattering to the people of this neighborhood today. Um, one last note, some of you might know Jim Naughton. He is the editor of Episcopal Cafe and is a church communications person and is a big advocate of Ashes to Go and helped the Diocese of Chicago promote um, the early efforts of, of, that, um, of that movement years ago, several years ago. And uh, we, we, we had a tweet from Jim Naughton on the day of Ashes to Go, and I'll, I'll just paraphrase it. Uh, he basically said, I didn't think this thing was going to work for St. Paul's State Street. <laughs> um, you know, this is, this is a, for the most part, th this movement happens at you know, progressive churches that, uh, you know, um, are more likely to have guitars than, um, you know, crazy vestments like you're seeing on the uh, screen, copes. And my wife was astounded that we wore copes. I came home and I said, yeah, I had to wear the coat today. And she said, you wore copes on Ash Wednesday? But, uh, but it was this powerful thing of it was big and bright. Um, there wasn't a lot of purple out on the street that day. Uh, and we were hard to miss. <laughs> um, but Jim's tweet said, I didn't think, I didn't think Ashes to Go was going to work for St. Paul's K Street, but you trusted who you were. And you trusted that, um, that your sort of Anglo-Catholic thing um, was going to resonate with people and trusted that, that um, a moment of beautiful liturgy in the middle of a busy intersection in Washington, D.C. could be a powerful and transformative thing. And I gotta tell you, it really was. Uh, we are still sort of flush with the excitement of, of this day. I mean, we met 550 neighbors that day. Um, we handed out a lot of brochures. Um, that, that's more people than St. Paul's Parish has, has met in the neighborhood in a long time. And, and people were really excited about it, and, and we're hoping to carry that momentum forward. So that, you know, bring your proclamation um, into your neighborhoods in whatever ways you can think of. Now, I saw